to the Misfit Squad podcast, where we invite you to embrace your difference and to discover a spectrum of possibilities and change what's wrong about you into what is strong about you. Hey, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of the Misfit Squad podcast. Today's show, Stop and Smell the Roses. Between our phones and tablets, laptops and TV, there's a lot of screen time happening lately especially during, you know, because obviously this is in Corona times. So, I mean, some people like 24 seven with the uh, screen time, which is kind of crazy. So what occurs if you take time to unplug and head out on an adventure in the great outdoors? What energetic messages do, does nature have for you? I wonder. Yeah, I wonder. Yeah, there's, We're going to talk a little bit about nature and energy today um, and what nature actually contributes to us if you're willing to listen. Um, So there's this thing that the other day just popped up out of me and I'd like to read it to you because we're also going to talk a little bit of like, we always talk about being space. Well, what does that mean? What is that? So I'm going to read this to you and then we'll talk about that. (laughs) Um, So this is by, uh, I believe her name is Mira Lee Patel. Um, self-care is usually one of the last items on our very long to-do list and it grows longer and longer. So we often don't care for ourselves. So that's why we're talking about being out in nature today. But if we can't find and care for ourselves and be loving or have gratitude for ourselves, how can anyone else have that for us? And I thought this was kind of cute the way she wrote this. Um, so this is how it goes. The stars we see shining above us are far away, but they still rise with us in the early morning. When nightfall shrouds us with a heavy cloak, they glitter and remind us that there's light in the darkest of places. Stars are composed of various elements, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, sulfur, and phosphorus that are all held together by their own gravity. Like stars, we are each held together by our own describable forces. Tiny little beacons of light that glow within us, making us who we are, one of a kind beings that are privy to a spectrum of emotions, ambitions, and dreams. So when you realize this, it becomes impossible to wish that you were anybody else. And a rule that continually tells you to change who you are, it becomes much easier to be honest and intentional to be exactly as you are. So feeling connected to the rule Feeling connected to the world begins by nurturing the connection that you have with yourself. And as you continue to know and understand yourself more clearly, you'll recognize a tiny piece of yourself everywhere in the plants in the animals and the people around you and on the darkest nights, even in the stars. So it's basically saying connect with yourself and connect with nature because actually nature is in you. You are nature. Nature is us. And we, you know, so do you want to talk a little bit more about that and about space? Yeah. So, I mean, basically we're, if you break us down to the smallest particles of our bodies, we're made of, atoms of nitrogen and oxygen and and so we're all made of the same stuff right so at the at the lowest level we're all the same not separate um and so to sort of carry on from what we talked about last week about why our dogs make us feel better or why animals make us feel better it's a really similar thing with nature and I don't even, I've already lost count of the number of shows we've talked about, like being more space. And that's like one of the number one things that one of our first like tools is like be more space. And then people are like, what do you mean? What do you mean? What's, what's be more space? So going outside and being quiet with nature, um, is a great way to start getting familiar with being space because essentially the plants and the trees and the outside, they are space. The way that they be in the world 
creates that peace and ease in that space. So even if you can't go outside and like be quiet, right? If you just go for a walk or, you know, go out and look at the plants in your yard. Um, and if you're just willing to like take deep breaths and, you know, calm your rhythm down just a little bit, you can start to sense the difference of how you feel, say, like when you're inside your house or inside your car or rushing around. Um, and that starts to give you an idea of what it feels like to be space and then how to be more space. Um, and again, it's part of the reason that like for 99% of the people, certainly probably a hundred percent of the people that listen to the show, they feel, you feel better when you're outside. Right. And it's kind of like what we talked about last week too, with the animals. Um, nature doesn't judge. Nature doesn't judge you. Um, it's really funny because we always say, you know, everybody's talking about their hair nowadays. Nowadays, <clears throat> excuse me. Everybody's talking about their hair's hair nowadays, and they're freaking out because they haven't been to the hairdresser and gotten a haircut or whatever they do. Um, and so, but do you are you still comfortable with yourself regardless of that? Because the birds or the bunnies or whatever, the birds don't sing if they have a bad feather day. You know, like their feathers aren't fluffed the right way; they don't stop singing. So it's like looking at how, like, when do you feel the most connected to the world and when do you feel the most alive? Um, And it's different for everybody. But one thing I will say is like being out in nature really helps me clear my head and connect more back with my body and who I, who I really am. Um, And it's part of it is the no judgment that nature has. Like, like, for example, like a fruit tree. A fruit tree produces fruit, regardless, like an apple tree. Sometimes the apples are nice and shiny, you know, and they're plump and no wormholes, and you can pick them from the tree. And other times the apples fall from the tree and they get rotted and all molded on the ground. And I'm going to say there's like another time, but like the, the, it always produces fruit. I mean, if you have a good bearing fruit tree, it does. And it produces fruit, whether you come and pick it or you don't come and pick it, you know, whether the apples, you pick them off or you pick them off the ground or they let them mold, you know, and degenerate back into the earth and reproduce itself again. So the point of that is the earth is always willing to give and contribute and gift to us if we're willing to take the time and the space to actually listen. Yeah, so you have to go out and you have to sort of play around with it and see, you know, what works for you. Um, For me, it's better when I'm in, it's easier, let's say, when I'm in the water, right? Yeah. Uh, Particularly in the ocean, but really any water will do. Um, And then also for me, I... um, need to touch the leaves, you know, like there's something for me about like feeling a leaf that gives me more information or different information about being outside. For you, it might be like rubbing your hand, you know, touching your hand on the bark or sitting in, under the shade of a tree or, you know, I don't know. Smelling, or smelling the roses. Smelling the roses or like fresh cut grass or like lying in the grass. I mean, you know, or, or feeling a gentle breeze. You know, that's actually, it's funny because I'm pretty much like 95% of the time cold. Um, But I actually really love it when it's a little bit windy. There's something about the movement of energy in space when there's like a breeze and the wind um, that I really like. Also funny because riding horses in the wind is usually not fun. (laughs) So it's a funny combination, but you know what I mean? Like, so turn into what, what, when you're out, if you haven't really spent much time paying attention to that, like tune into that, see what you notice. There's a lot of information there for you. There's a ton of information. And you know, one thing I would say with that is like, well, like the wind, like to me, it's like the willingness to perceive what's going on because the wind or the breeze blows and it's the perception and it's always constantly changing so like earth is constantly changing, like even standing and looking at a tree, like 
how is the leaf blowing? You know, what direction? And just looking at the, all the veins and everything, it's just, it's amazing when you take the moment to do that. And we're so often, we know, um, we're really good at knowing what other people desire and require and want, and that we often forget what it is that we actually desire or require. So when you're out around in nature and not around a bunch of people, it's often that a moment to connect and get more clear on what is it that creates more for you in your life? What do you enjoy doing? Um, and are you, do you feel like you always need to do something rather than just simply be? Right. So what, ki- what gift, if you're willing to acknowledge that it's there and receive from it, what gift can the, the bur- bush on the corner or really the weed in the concrete, like, I mean, it sounds silly, but like if you're walking along and there's like a dandelion growing out of the concrete and you just like, are like, wow, look at that weed. How amazing it is that it's growing through the concrete. Like what can you receive simultaneously from that plant, from that, from that weed? You know, um, like a, like, I think it was like a year ago or more, I got my parents' house. They lived by this lake and um, there was a huge like um, wind, what do they call that? Wind gust like almost like a tornado, but not a tornado that comes through. And it just like twisted a lot of the trees and took a lot of stuff out and down. And there's this one tree that was like, it's just like the trunk and the, all the branches got cut off and the tree is growing. Like all these little branches, these tiny little leaves and stuff are coming out of this massive trunk. And I was like, that is such a message of like in the midst of turmoil or in the midst of darkness that you can still grow, that you can still change and you can come out of it with even more greatness. Um, It's really, it was really cool to watch. And at the same time that that happened, there's this, um, there's geese all over and a lot of geese come in, like even white geese come in at the winter time. And there's a duck, like this white duck, total oddball, he talked about not fitting in. He did not fit in. There was no other ducks. And he would hang out with the geese because what happened, his wing got injured and he couldn't fly. He couldn't migrate with the rest of his crew. So he stuck around all throughout the winter. And you'd see him walking around with his like limped um, wing, but he still kept going. And, you know, it was interesting because he stayed really far away from the geese for quite some time, almost like a season. And then they allowed him in and he got closer and you would see him out on the lake and the geese would be like floating on the lake. And then there's this duck a little bit farther away, but he was always engaged with them. So it was a cool thing of like observing nature and how even like the willingness to accept those who look different, you know, when you feel like you don't fit in. And it was just, it was just a meaningful, I guess, if you want to say that, it was just really awesome to watch how that all took place. Yeah, that's cool. So ask yourself, when do you feel the most connected to the world and when do you feel the most alive? And what if you could go out, take some time this week, we dare you, take some time this week, go out in nature and spend a few minutes like just observing. See if you can watch the insects or look at the bark on the trees. I mean, the bark is different on all the trees. What do you notice? Yeah, or another good one is like, all right, show me something beautiful today, outside today, and see what you notice. And then see how, pay attention, be aware of like how that changes something in your body or how you feel. And just play around with it and see what changes, what shows up. Yep. There is, if you are interested, there is a thing called the meditation walk where, and it's if it, something that would work for you, but it's basically to experience you becoming more present with yourself and with nature. So you basically take, and you can use whatever time you want, but you can take like an hour to walk a hundred feet. So you can, don't, you don't have, it's choice. You don't have to move. You can move, but basically it's just observing and being aware of everything around you. Like we were just talking about the blades of the grass, the bark, the insects, the sky, the clouds. Um, you're not supposed to talk to anybody. You're not supposed to look at anybody. So it's good to do it just when it's just you and nature. Um, and what it is, is helping you get present with every moment. 
every second throughout that entire hour. So that's another so, thing that you can do. I just have to say, I hate that exercise. <laughs> so for those of you who like that amount of stillness is a challenge. The, the other version of that meditation walk that I've, that I've done is, is instead of, you don't have to focus on limiting yourself to the hundred feet. Right. Right. But you do get present. And what you do is you really, you, uh, walk with intention and like really feel your feet touching the ground and then sort of like moving through the space. And that also is a way to bring your awareness to everything around. So for those of you who like to move more in the stillness of moving such a small amount of space would be challenging. Try the meditation walk where you're intentionally paying, you know, attention yeah, to how your feet. Ultimately what it is, is to help you with the intensity and presence and awareness of space, the space of you. So it goes back to what we were talking about, the willingness to be that space. Right. And if you do these things, um, and it doesn't have to be like, you know, big, long exercise or whatever, what it, what you'll learn is what is that space feel like for you? And then, and you'll be more aware and familiar with it. So when you need it, but you can't get outside let's say you're sitting in a meeting or you're in a class and your professor, what, like whatever. And you're like, you know, you can then, if you've done it outside and you're familiar with it, you can actually just like call that energy up and access it and get that release that it gives you without having to go do it outside. But yeah. it's easier in the beginning to do it outside, to do that thing, to be really familiar with it. Then you always have it. Yes. And, it, and it's very true because when you do have that, like earth, nature exists everywhere. It's not just outside. Like if you're willing to, if you're willing and you can perceive that energy and be that space, you could be standing in the midst of concrete and still receive from the earth. Right. When you're standing on concrete, you're still touching the earth. Yeah. It's funny, actually, when we, uh, I was in Venice a few years ago for like two weeks for a bunch of seminars and there were a bunch of people that I was with who were like, Oh my God, I can't touch the earth. I don't, I'm being on top of it. Like they were completely freaking out about like all the water and about the fact that like their feet weren't actually like on the ground ground. And sometimes you'll hear other, you know, spiritual people or whatever they're talk about being grounded and putting your feet on the earth or whatever. And I, the, the whole time I was like, what is, you guys are, what are you talking about? Like, you're still on the earth. You are still touching things of the earth. Like the, the, the marble, like Venice is covered in like beautiful stone and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, you're still touching the earth. Just, you know, anyway, so. It goes back to like all those particles. It's made out of hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, like phosphorus. It's all the particles and we all are the particles and everything on this earth is made of those particles. So if we're willing to receive from everything, the animate and the inanimate objects, yeah. it allows you to have space everywhere you are. Yep. So that's it for this week's show. Um, if you want to go grab uh, our free, free ebook, uh, it's isyourbodyyourbuddy.com. You have to pop in your email and then it'll send you a link to download it because it's too big to just put it on that page. So is your body or buddy.com pop in your email and you'll get our free ebook about and it's got awesome tips and tools, like kind of what we're talking about being yeah. able to be more in connection with your body. And, and again, the ebook is, is specifically about how to use those tools to create a greater relationship with your body. And as in everything that we talk about, those tools don't just work for your body. They work for everything. So go check it out and we'll see you next week on the show. All right, guys, have a Bye. great week. Go out in nature. <laughs> Bye. Thank you for listening to the show. Our target is to make your awareness easy to use and to acknowledge the power of not fitting in. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe to our channel on YouTube and share it with someone you know. Why fit in when you were born to stand out? Embrace your difference. Join the Misfit Squad. Mm -hmm.